Hi everyone, we're going to take a quick break and then we'll get started on this shortly. I need to get all the settings right, but welcome to the Fly Ranch and Leggy Design Challenge. And uh, you're going to make um, Laura Dane and myself, Desert Rose, co-hosts? If you can give me a few minutes, that's what I'm trying to set up for. That's quite all right. No, no problem. Thank okay. you. All right, Zach, can you say something so you make sure the sound's working? Yes. How do I sound? Do I sound good to everybody? You sound lovely. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Desert Rose, could you speak up? Try yours? Yes. Testing one, two, three. Great. Okay. Hi, Lisa and Elizabeth. Hi. How are you guys? Good. Hi, Lisa. Can you hear us? How are you? I'm doing good. Yes, I can hear you beautifully. Where are you, Lisa? I am in Reno right now. Let's see. We are still have a couple more people joining us that are helping with this session. And as soon as I get that all set up, I'll take this over to Zach. Ah, there you are. Hi, Laura Dane. Can you say something so we can check in? Just in my audio. Can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? Yes. Can I have you stand down for a moment while I work with the rest of the group? Thank you, Mike. But I can hear you. Laura, can Fireball. you? Hi, Fireball. Oh. It's Laura. Hi. Welcome. I'll get my video going in just a second. No problem. Thank you everybody for your patience. I'm trying to set up all the co-hosts and everything and make sure that they're all working properly. Well, welcome everybody. I hope you enjoyed the plenary session. Hi everybody, just so you know, we are recording this session. I don't want anybody to be surprised. And if you have questions, please put them in chat. We have two moderators that will help uh, 
direct that and hopefully we'll just have a great conversation here. There we go. Hi, Joy, can you test your sound? Yes, can you hear me? I can. I couldn't find your name on the list, so it took me a minute. And with that, I have everybody included. Uh, if we'll just take about two more minutes to let everybody finish getting drinks and stretching or whatever they needed, and then it's gonna be all yours, Zach. Thank you very much, Fireball. As people are gathering, I wanna invite you all um, to set chat to everyone in meeting. Um, there's a sign up sheet so we can track like which bodies are moving into which breakout rooms. And so I dropped a link in the chat that y'all are able to use um, to let us know that you were here and allows us to follow up and we will also be able to track questions um, that you can drop in either the chat or a Q and A structure. I don't think this one has Q and A. So we have a chat monitor who will be helping with Q and A when we get to that. So happy to see all of you. Yes, let me say something to that. I'm Desert Rose, uh, one of the two co-chat moderators. And yes, please put your questions into the chat. Um, one, we want to see them, make sure we catch you. And two, also we would love to have a, a record of those questions. And I believe there, um, I'm kind of fumbling a little bit here, but I'm pretty sure there's a raise your hand capability or you can raise your hand, but um, uh, that's all I'll say for now. And if I find the raise hand capability, you can do that too. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Desert Rose. Um, Fireball, you feel we're good to go? Lovely. Uh, welcome everyone. I hope you enjoyed this morning's plenary. Uh, I thought, thought it was quite enjoyable, particularly the, the music from Jurgis this morning. Um, it is delightful to see all of you, um, albeit in a digital format. We have traditionally done this gathering at Fly Ranch. And while um, there is a part of my heart that is breaking this morning, uh, because we're not there, the ability to open this up and really be expansive and inclusive of um, anyone, whether they can travel or anything, if they've got an internet connection, they can be here and they can join us. Uh, and that feels like a really wonderful gift. And, and my hat goes off to the BWB team and everyone that has worked really, really hard to put this together. I'm a member of the BWB camp and BRC. Most of our crew is, um, we've been working with them for the last three or four years doing some really special stuff. Um, and this community I think is a really powerful network of creators and thinkers and experimenters and problem solvers um, and is poised, I think, um, really in a great position to help solve some of the challenges that we're looking at on a, on a big scale, not just Burning Man scale, but we're talking grand scale. Um, and I think some of those things are becoming apparent now. This session is, uh, it's about Fly Ranch and it's about regenerative design and it's about some of the things that we're doing and really is a chance to focus and highlight um, what, what is now our main program for the year, um, which is really um, offering the, the Burning Man community and the wider creative culture an opportunity to utilize Fly Ranch um, and the space and the community and sort of that container to offer up regenerative designs for climate solutions um, and really looking at what does a post-carbon world look like. We've got some special people here that we're going to hear from um, and I'm excited to have you all here. Thank you, thank you for being here. Um, I know from personal firsthand experience that Zoom fatigue is real. Um, it takes a lot, um, particularly on a Saturday, to get people like, hey, come and can sit in a Zoom meeting. Um, so I'm grateful you're all here and, and I know that that means that um, it's important. So thank you. Um, I'm not going to delve too much into the specifics of Fly Ranch, but for those um, who, who may not be aware, it's a 3,800 acre property. Um, that is just north of the Black Rock City event site by 12 miles. Um, I want to see if I can share my screen a little bit. Nope, it doesn't do that. Okay. Um, 
It is about 12 miles north of the Black Rock City event site. It is a property that Burning Man has owned for now uh, about five years. Um, it's actually the site of Burning Man 1997. So there are about 10,000 people there right on the wall of Pai Pai. It was the year that we could not return to federal land. Um, and so we got to know this place. We got to understand how very special it was. Um, we spent the first real year of uh, stewardship of the property, and that's really what we consider it, doing an environmental baseline. We, we brought on board an environmental fellow, a woman named Dr. Lisa Beers. She's incredible. Um, she stayed on the property for 14 months while we just sat and watched. Basic permaculture principle, it's the observation period. She was able to catalog the flora, the fauna. She set up wind instrumentation to do uh, light readings, relative humidity, sunset, sunrise, um, all of that. A, a tremendous amount of this data is available on our website, flyranch.burningman.org, and it's also available on the Land Art Generator Initiatives um, website for the Loggy 2020 Design Challenge, which is Loggy 2020 org bloggy 2020 flight ranch.org um, after that we went through a process of experimentation of seeing what small gatherings looked like with the information that we had from these assessments um, we did uh, small prototype gatherings with groups like burns without borders we did restoration weekends we've done um, art builds um, starting to collect some some really interesting and beautiful art pieces um, Baba Yaga's house, uh, which if you remember from two years ago in Black Rock City has been installed. We have uh, solar arrays from theme camps. We have incredible, uh, we have an incredible banya um, that the art of steam, it's, a, it's essentially a wet sauna. Um, you can see in the background of Boris's picture actually there. He's got a picture of it um, at, at Fly Ranch. Um, and, and it's been an incredible opportunity to iterate, to flex that muscle of regenerative culture. Um, to create positive feedback loops between the event, Black Rock City, uh, and Fly Ranch, the property, whether it's bringing things to that space, giving them a longer lifespan, um, or experimenting and iterating at the property, and, and then being able to prototype those things there and then export them out to the Black Rock City event. We've seen that happen with um, small mobile solar battery packs that we've been testing, with things like ecozoic toilets, biofiltration toilets, um, and, and really iterating and learning, because that is what our community does. We learn through doing. Um, and now we have a place to do and then and then bring out um, first to Black Rock City and then the wider world, which I think is really the exciting part. So um, the challenge with a year round property of this kind is how do you do that in a Burning Man way? Um, you know, we uh, in Black Rock City create the container. We identify the roads. We put up the signage. Um, we make a big invitation and we give permission. And, and that for me is the really powerful thing about Burning Man and doing that in a year round context has some interesting challenges. There are infrastructure challenges, there are personality challenges, there are longevity challenges. Um, you know, in, in any uh, community year round, there's people that have been there for a long time, people have been there for a short time, there's people with, you know, good ideas and high work ethic and people just wanna hang, you know, so there's all these sort of social challenges in addition to the technological and the environmental challenges. For us, the model that really made sense in terms of approaching this space and saying, what is going to be here? Um, what is this space? Uh, was really looking at a design challenge model. So in that way, we're able to do that same thing where we secure the property, we identify the roads, we do a, a, a big placement process where we say, these are the places where intervention is, is appropriate. This is the places where we know we can have an impact and not disturb the environment. Um, and, and here are the places that we know are really sensitive through that work that, that Dr. Lisa Beers, who I will occasionally refer to as Scurpus, um, uh, has done. And, and through that, um, we were able to partner with the Land Art Generator Initiative through an introduction with, I believe, Michael Michael or Dusty Michael, um, and start to collaborate and look at what a, a design challenge might look like. And I'll, I'll have Lagi introduce themselves here in, in a second. Um, but really, we embarked on a multi-year project and a multi-year journey to take this 3,800 acres, find uh, the few hundred acres that were most appropriate for regenerative design interventions. Um, we looked at approaching five categories that would really give us a foundational infrastructure at the property. It is a community source, community driven, community built foundational infrastructure for this property that will allow us to do long-term residencies, larger gatherings, um, year round sustainable, 
um, interactions in that space. Right now, we're kind of limited to event production style infrastructure, whether it's pop up tents or shipping containers or, or, or things that are great for a week in the desert, because that's what we've been doing is, is hanging out for a week in the desert. But beyond that, we are finding some challenges. Um, so there are five categories for submission. There is uh, power, water, shelter, food, and regenerative technologies. It's things like biogas or composting. Um, taking outputs and making them inputs. Um, and it's really exciting. The design challenge is open now. We have an incredible um, list of, of jurors that will help us um, look at these and, and, and find the ones that can work best in this environment. A, a massive suite of technological experts. Um, and it's really exciting. The design challenge is open until October 31st. I, I deeply encourage you to check it out log 2020 flybranch.org um, and, and get involved, you know, with Black Rock City not happening this year, it, it's a great outlet for that creative energy. Um, it's a great way to get involved and still stay connected. And, and it's a great way to connect with your community and still um, create something together. So we've got some wonderful folks here um, in this chat that I would like to open this up, give them the opportunity to introduce themselves. Um, I'll start with Elizabeth and Robert, who are the co-founders of the Land Art Generator Initiative. They will show you their beautiful website, tell you a bit more about the specifics of the design challenge. Um, and before I hand it off to them, I will say, please make sure you've had the opportunity to sign in at the forum we have. And if you have any questions, drop them in the chat and they will be flagged by our moderators. Once again, thank you all for being here, Robert and Elizabeth. Thanks, Zach. And thank you, uh, Lisa. It's nice to see you both. Um, nice to see everyone. Nice to see everyone. We miss people. Um, so I'm not sure if we can share our screen. Has that been established here? I'm going to give it a shot here. Um, what we're going to do is super. Give you a bit of a tour of the Loggy 2020 Fly Ranch website um, by way of starting with a little bit of background about the Land Art Generator Initiative very quickly. Can we just go to the Loggy tab? Um, we have been holding international design competitions for a little over a decade. We were living in Dubai in 2008 and just had this idea, what would it look like if our energy infrastructure was designed by creatives? What might that mean? How could it shift the entire conversation around our energy landscapes if creatives were at the helm? So. We've held competitions in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, Copenhagen, New York City, Santa Monica, Melbourne, Australia. Um, and here we are at Fly Ranch for 2020 and couldn't be happier because uh, the landscape itself is awesome in every possible uh, meaning of that word. Um, but also because the Burning Man community is awesome and broad and massive. Um, so there's an opportunity right now to have creative minds and engineers and scientists um, globally really reimagining what our sustainable systems can look like um, and what this place Fly Ranch might hold as, um, as a place to study in years to come. And we probably don't have to reiterate what everyone on this um, summit understands uh, beginning with a session on interbeing that um, the interrelationship of, of everything is, is so critically important. And what we've seen in the nascent years of the energy transition is a siloing of, of art, culture, community, infrastructure, and people doing things in, in their own camps and not communicating. This project, in part, is an attempt to break down those barriers, bring communities together, increase interdisciplinary design, co-design our energy landscapes together so that we can come up with solutions that are greater than the sum of their parts. We all know that systems, as we study nature, um, interwork together, um, waste streams from one thing become the feedstock for another's survival. And that's the kind of approach that we hope folks will have in mind when they start to look at these five systems, how they interrelate with each other. You can decide to design for one of them only, or you could decide to design for multiples and come up with ways in which they can um, support each other. Um, right now, the, slide, uh, the site is, is in no way a blank slate. It is a rich and amazing ecosystem, um, but 
in terms of infrastructure, it's really, um, there's, there's not much there yet. Um, and Zach and Lisa and others on the call can talk more about the existing conditions that there are que <coughs> questions. We've seen, excuse me, that there have already been some um, questions about water, so we might want to go into that a little bit. Um, what you see on the screen here is the design site in a very graphic uh, format. Um, the, the property of, of Fly Ranch itself, the 3,800 acres, um, adjoins Black Rock Station, and Lisa Nash can talk about Black Rock Station. I'm circling that right now. I hope everyone can see that. Um, there might be some tools, actually, we can use here. OK, so let's talk about the primary site, low impact site, and conservation areas. Yeah, so the primary site boundary, boundary is where we want teams to focus the majority of their attention. It's really anything goes in these sites because they're, for the most part, previously disturbed areas where the previous land owners have intervened in some way. Um, the secondary sites are low impact boundaries where you are allowed to extend your energy landscape, for example, as long as it doesn't have a deep foundation, doesn't require any major earth moving. Um, and then the grayed out areas are conservation areas where we ask that no intervention be made unless it is purely to bring back native species, remove um, invasive species, um, conservative minded, interventions like that are allowed in those areas. And we won't go into it right now, but we really encourage you to click where it says, click here to explore the Google map KML. It is very rich in information. And again, as Zach mentioned Scurpus, she has brought a wealth of information to this project and uh, extreme gratitude to all of the research she's done on site um, and really does impact how we determined the design site boundaries and uh, will determine everything moving forward um, with Fly Ranch. There's also a, um, a, an area south of the primary site. If you drive down the road in gray here, um, past by where Black Rock City is built, and you keep going down towards Gerlach, Nevada, you'll see there's a lower parcel here. And you're invited to extend your low impact solutions into this lower parcel as well. Uh, so let's quickly hit the supplemental materials page because we, uh, the entire team has put together a lot of content for design teams. Um, and this page is really where you're going to dive into the site context. So we've got a lot of photographs that you can download and design onto. Um, again, the design site boundary KML file, um, Washoe County Development Code, information about Pyramid Lake, um, and much, much more. The Fly Ranch Roadmap, the Burning Man Project 2030 Environmental Sustainability Roadmap. So how does Loggy 2020 Fly Ranch fit into the greater picture of Burning Man and Fly Ranch? Um, and a field guide to renewable energy technology that's going to outline probably 75 technologies that you might be interested in utilizing in your designs um, and more. But this is a very important page to spend some time on and um, download the documents. Uh, really quickly, what are we asking for exactly? Um, one of the things that's unique about this design brief is that it doesn't have a detailed program um, because uh, Fly Ranch, the Burning Man organization, the diaspora of folks who, are, who collectively are stakeholders for this place, haven't made any decisions exactly on um, how many square feet of shelter or how many um, kilowatt hours of energy are we hoping to generate here. These are things that will evolve over time as the site um, is, is sustainably developed um, in a collaborative way. Um, so what we're looking for here are really in artful in, in, in infrastructures that can provide the foundation to allow this to, to bloom in, a, in whatever way that it does. We're asking for three-dimensional sculptural forms that can excite the minds of visitors, um, get people interested in the place. They must be contextual, they must be respectful, um, and they must also do the, one of these other things. 
um, they must either provide energy, water, food, shelter, or um, be a path towards zero waste. Um, so spend time on this page also uh, to mention that there is funding available to prototype several of the design outcomes next summer. So we're very much looking forward to post the close of the competition, working with the entire selection committee, um, amazing team of jurors that have signed on and are giving their time um, to review these projects very carefully. Um, and next summer we'll be building on site prototypes. Um, can you go to the contact page? I uh, really want to point out and shout out everyone that has been working behind the scenes to make this project happen. It's been a great pleasure to work with all of these people you see listed here and many, many more. So, uh, and the, the team is growing constantly. Um, there's going to be a publication that comes out there. I think there are even people on this call who are contributing to that publication. So just know it's a big, awesome team um, and collaborative and interdisciplinary. And I think that what we'll do is give the floor over to whoever is up next. Um, we're here to answer questions once people have presented and it's very easy to contact us by email or phone if you have more questions. A shout out to the Profile and Dust team who put together the beautiful homepage video. Um, we're not gonna play it now because it'll be all jumpy. So we just, uh, um, really recommend people check, check that out. Thank you. I, thank you, Elizabeth and Robert. I super recommend people check out the, the video at loggy2020flyranch.org. Um, it's really wonderful and gives a beautiful sense of the property in a little bit. Uh, you can meet some of the folks behind it. You can see who the heck Skirpus is. Um, you can do all kinds of things. I also, it's been an interesting year for us um, and normally at this time of the year we would be doing events, we would be doing nature walks, we'd be doing work weekends, we'd be doing gatherings. Um, obviously right now that's it's not the thing to be doing. So um, in lieu of that I'm going to drop in the chat a little a little beta project um, that one of the Profiles and Dust crew and a volunteer named Steve that we've been working with is working on an aerial 3D tour of the property where you can kind of like hop around and see how we look uh, you know, around this time of the year. Uh, it gives a good sense of some of the history and really what we're dealing with. And um, it includes a lot of the primary site boundaries that is included within the design challenge. So I would encourage folks to check that out. Um, I would love to offer the floor to a couple of folks um, that have been involved in this project. Uh, the first is Linda Samuels. Um, Linda, I believe you're here. Um, who has, well, I'll let her introduce herself, but she has been on the end of someone that's been working with a number of students to submit proposals. And they were able to come out to the one site preview walk that we were able to do. We had several scheduled, but we were able to do one. Um, spent a lot of time talking with local um, folks in Gerlach at the school, um, at, at the Pyramid Lake Paiute um, Tribal Museum, uh, at the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center where they've got some massive arrays going up and, and has just like jumped in and gotten super involved and has been a wonderful person. So um, Linda, if you're able to, I'd love you to share just a little bit about your experience and what that's been like, both um, getting to know the property and the space, your impressions of it, and then what the proposal process has been like for you. Sure, I would love to. Um, first, let me say hi to everybody. So great to see you all. Um, and I can't say how lucky I feel that we made it before, you know, we went under lockdown and um, got to go out to the site. We, we started the semester and the first day of class, I said, okay, everyone, we need to book our tickets today. And we were on the site two weeks after the first day of the semester. And I think my students were a little shocked to get going so quick, but um, I had 14 undergraduate architecture students from Washington University in St. Louis, and our goal of the semester was to use the Loggy prompt to learn what it means to sort of design foundational infrastructure. And um, I will say, five years ago, 10 years ago, architects were not part of the infrastructure conversation. And so it was really great to see Ron Rayal's presentation. Ron was one of our finalists for the WPA 2.0 competition, which was the competition I ran at City Lab at UCLA, which was kind of the first 
way we brought these things together in a like competition, big scale basis. So um, it's really nice that infrastructure, architecture, urban design, landscape architecture, ecology, that we're all recognizing the value of working together. Um, seeing the site, many of you have seen the site, um, but seeing the site for me and for my students was just magical. Um, we got to walk with Zach and Erica. Um, I think we totaled about seven and a half miles. Uh, did a four hour walk, had perfect weather. Um, and I think one of the things to really notice about the site, and we sort of frame the semester this way, is these sort of dichotomies. Someone already mentioned the invasive species on the, um, the sort of third level of site where you can interact with that portion of the site. And one of my students had this fact that they found that after 10,000 years of being on the site, you're no longer considered invasive. So one of the ways we, we like approach the concept of how we look at the site is what are all these interesting dichotomies? So we looked at what is invasive and what is native and that's culture as well as plants, right? There's such an interesting history of culture on the site too. Um, we looked at the micro scale and the macro scale. So uh, the immediately impressive thing is the sky. You know, this is one of the darkest places in the US. People come out here to but we also looked at animal poop, like the teeny. So, um, it's also got extremes in every sort of way in terms of things like temperature. So it's extremely hot and extremely cold. Unfortunately, we got to only see it in, in one season, but still the temperature shifts, what, like 40 degrees within the course of a day. So, um, so with the students, we did a series of kind of great in-depth mappings about what we saw on the site and what we photographed and what we researched. And luckily we came back and we started working on projects before spring break and um, the students learned how to collaborate before we were like burst, uh, uh, kind of dispersed into the virtual universe. Um, and so after spring break, they were working in teams from different locations across the country and uh, um, the deadline being extended, which it was originally in May and is now in October. Um, I'm super fortunate all my students have decided they want to keep working on the project over the summer. And again, I'm hoping to see them in the fall where we will continue having the conversations. But um, we work off of something called next generation infrastructure. And uh, that idea that the, the kind of uh, waste from one system is the fuel for another system, the creation of sort of symbiotic relationships. We, all of my students are, are required to look at at least two types of infrastructure, hopefully three. Um, but it's been a great experience so far and I, I can't wait to sort of see what comes out of this and both in my group and in other groups who are participating. So thanks for inviting me and um, really enjoying working on the competition with my group and with you guys. Thank you, Linda. Um, I had the, the absolute privilege uh, of meeting some of your students um, and actually sitting in on their final lab uh, to check in on where they were at. Um, and it was, it was deeply inspiring to see those projects and where they're at. Uh, and I had the opportunity to do that because I, um, nor Matt, nor Joe, nor Skirpus, the rest of the Fly Ranch team, um, are, are going to be jurors for this. Uh, we have an incredible list of jurors. We have 32 that range from um, Burning Man artists, some founders, members of in incredibly um, progressive uh, groups focused around sustainability and regeneration, members of First Nation tribes. Um, it, it's a really wonderful list of, of folks from throughout the world, not just Burning Man. And, and I would encourage you to um, check out the jurors tab at loggy2020flyranch.org um, because it's gonna, be, it's gonna be really exciting, I think. And speaking of jurors, we have actually one of our jurors um, as well as a board member for the Land Art Generator Initiative. Um, Victor, uh, I wanna give the, you the opportunity to have the floor to share anything about your experiences with Loggy or perhaps with this design challenge. Um, and then we'll go into some Q&A questions because I see some great ones stacking up. Hi, hello, uh, sure thing. Um, first of all, uh, as everybody uh, speaking here has said, I, I want to thank the opportunity of, of being um, connected with this amazing community and to have like a little bit of space to talk uh, about this great project of Fly Ranch 
and laggy open call. Um, I, I, I've been thinking what, what to say about this because I, I think like many of the people that is connected here is um, uh, thinking about technical questions, but that this, this might not be the forum to do like very hard technical questions. So I just would like to share um, a little bit of the story of, of, uh, or, or, or of the importance of this. So um, in these times uh, that are very convulsed, and uh, I think it's very important to rethink about art as a biological product. So if we reconsider uh, the human being as a, of course, as, as a biolo bi biological being and, um, and it, all of its outcomes, a biological product, we would know that uh, culture and art are also biological products. So um, I would invite everybody to uh, stop thinking about human being as a virus, like, like a, a virus in a, in a bad way, as, as, um, as many times have been said during this COVID situation, and think more about uh, human beings as part of this whole system and how can we convert acts of culture into acts of nature which i think it's mainly the the, the main purpose of fly ranch would be this like convert, converting acts acts of culture into acts of nature and um apart from that i would say like I, i've been following laggy for uh, many years uh, uh, for about 10 years maybe uh, maybe a little bit less and um, I think a project like Laggy, uh, can, what can bring is to be a joint between futuristic and utopian ideas of how to change the actual world and uh, situation uh, with perspective, uh, art and architecture, technology and, 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 and all of that. Uh, but to have solutions today. And uh, one thing that I would like to say that is also like very realistic is that this won't be like the whole solution to the situation because um, um, sustainable technologies so, uh, such as, I don't know, like solar power has other problems like uh, batteries, lithium, uh, harvesting silicon and whatever. But still it's more like doing a step forward and um, and doing and asking these questions that cannot be solved alone to, to science or to philosophy or, or to any other uh, isolated discipline, but more like uh, acting uh, in this multidisciplinary encounter because uh, energy and, uh, and some other problems addressed by, by the challenge of this uh, fly ranch uh, uh, call are complex problems, which means that we need to be uh, multidisciplinary. And I'm not going to say more. Um, I, I, I have to be uh, honest that I'm a little bit ner nervous also. So I, I don't want to be uh, like talking all around the place. Uh, but I'm looking forward to see all the proposals. I've, I've been working for a while, just to give a, a little context and, and then say goodbye. I've, I've been working for a while uh, in my artistic practice with uh, energy as, as a thing that constructs the, the, uh, our known universe and how it manifests in matter, in consciousness, and in many other ways. And uh, so, and this uh, relationship with Laggy is a way to bring all these abstract ideas into something that is tangible and, and that is uh, 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 putting something into the world that might be helpful to uh, our human quest. And um, that's it. So I'm looking forward to see all your proposals and I'm always open in case that you want to uh, uh, start a conversation, ask something or, or anything else that I can be helpful. So I'm leaving my, my contact here in the chat for everybody. And um, I hope to talk to you soon again. Wonderful. Thank you, Victor. Uh, this is just a small sliver of a large number of really incredible people that have been coming to put this together. Um, and so my gratitude goes out to, to all of you that are here. Uh, while Victor was speaking, I was sort of rolling through uh, the, the chat a little bit and seeing who was here. And it's really wonderful to see both uh, a lot of familiar and far-flung faces as well as new friends and, and people to get involved. 
Um, we're already starting to get some very good questions in the chat. And so uh, in a second here, I'm gonna invite one of our chat moderators to identify a question, perhaps synthesize a little bit and then read that out. And then we will um, do our best to, to answer that or point to a resource probably that has that because um, there's a lot of information that's available out there. Um, I have two things that I would like to draw your attention to. The first is when we start getting into the weeds of some deeply technical questions, really the best thing to do is to, to email the, the Logi team. They have posted their email in the chat. It is lagi at landartgenerator.org. Um, it's a great resource. They can, they can talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. They can help point you in the right direction. Um, the other is um, a lot of times people have a good idea or they have some wonderful skills and they're trying to find somewhere to plug in. They're trying to find a group that's starting to think about a project or, or there's um, a, a community that's needing somebody that, that really knows this aspect of, of solar. Um, and so I invite you, we have a Facebook group. I don't love Facebook, um, but it's what we have and it's what we're using and we're working on spinning up other instances to continue a dialogue. But for now, uh, for those of you that are users, I'm gonna drop the group in the chat and it's just a great way to hear about what's going on, connect with other people, share some ideas, ask questions to the community, um, and just get involved, maintain part of that year-round dialogue, particularly in a year where we, we, we can't go out there yet. Um, it's, um, this is, uh, I'm a firm believer in Black Rock City and at Fly Ranch in, in the fact that community develops through shared struggle. Um, and so, you know, I am, uh, I am heartened to see gatherings like this and gatherings of community um, while we're all going through a shared struggle. Um, so I think we can do it. With that, uh, I would love to open up to our chat moderators to identify some questions, perhaps if there's ones that have come up a couple times, pop those out um, and, and do what we can to, to answer those questions and start a little bit of a dialogue. Thank you. Uh, Desert Rose here. We have about um, six different questions um, and um, I will take you in, in the order that I saw them. Um, so John Randolph, I believe you were the first with um, questions about the quality of the water, meningitis or something like that. And you also had another question too. You want to condense your several questions into one or do you, do you still have questions? John Randolph, just unmute. Sorry about that. I just needed to unmute. Yes. Uh, no, I, I'm just, uh, I'm putting these questions out there. Uh, you can combine those two questions, um, the first and the second one that you just uh, mentioned. Um, it really, I just wanted to know if the, if the waters had been tested for this, uh, this PAM, which I, I note in there, which is basically a microbe, and um, was just curious, you know, whether the waters are safe in that respect. Wonderful, thank you. Okay. Um, I, I will share that there is a microbial biogeochemistry report that is included in the supplemental materials on the LAGI website. Um, Dr. Scott Hamilton Brem and Dr. Marjorie Brooks, they come from the Southern Illinois University Carbondale in Carbondale, Illinois. Um, came out as part of a gathering we did probably two years ago, did some sampling um, and did some really cool things. I, I won't spoil it. Um, they did find some interesting things there that have not been found elsewhere. And there's some really interesting precursors for biofuels. Um, there's some very cool stuff, but there is a full analysis of, of what was found there. Um, and I will also say that we have multiple sources of water. And so, you know, they were able to, analyze um, some of the main hot springs areas, but there are several other wells. Some of them are capped, some of them are uncapped. Some of those are in process of that level of testing. We, we have done some general testing on them. Um, and then if they're, you know, we are in a feedback loop with the community. And so there are teams that have needed specific in, uh, uh, information and we have taken that question. We include it as part of the updates in terms of Q and A. Um, and then sometimes that results in us doing more studies. We had somebody that had this exact question about two weeks ago and they said, hey, I will send you some kits. And then, and then I will go out there, I'll walk around, I'll, I'll, I'll pick from the ponds that they're asking about uh, and send them back to them. So, you know, we're, we're willing to support that kind of remote study if, if and wherever possible. Loggy, I don't know if you guys have something to add. Uh, just the obvious, but um, as soon as those test results would come back, we would post them as soon as we have them 
on the general website so that everybody can take advantage of that material. Um, we do post a Q&A.pdf document every couple of weeks and we'll continue to do, th do so until through probably throughout early October. So as soon as information comes available, it's available to every participant equally. Um, and, and we do send out newsletters to people who are registered um, that get, lets them know that we've just updated that. So that is a reason to register so that you have that um, immediate information available. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Weldon, did you have some questions? Weldon. Just a second. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I just had a couple of questions. Information provided, but um, I'm a geoscientist, geologist, geophysicist, and um, I was wondering if the if the ranch has, if you know, if you have water rights, because um, the water rights are not always part of the, the surface rights, are not always part of the subsurface rights, and sometimes they get separated, and sometimes the water rights belong to someone across the road. So that that was something that um, I wanted to make certain of because that could put a big uh, a uh, big dent in the whole project, but um, and then the uh, the the other project, uh, other thing I want to ask is small parcel down near Gerlach. Um, in doing um, my research in the area and reading uh, reports and papers and things, uh, there's been a um, a uh, an area just I believe it's just north of the 350 acres that's called the Great Spo Boiling Springs. Um, there is actually a lease there that's been given out by the Bureau of Land Management for lithium mining by a company, I believe they're Canadian. And so uh, with the prices of lithium uh, going up and up and up, uh, that's something that uh, they could begin mining operations right adjacent to uh, the piece of property you have that, you know, you don't want to have anything or very, you know, it needs to be careful with environmentally. So, um, yeah, I don't know how uh, that's something maybe I don't know if it's anything we could do about it. If the BLM decides they want to go ahead with that project, there's probably not much uh, that can be done about it. But um, um, just wanted to throw that out there. Um, another thing, uh, there's a, the, the Ormat plant that's located to the south, the uh, San Emilio plant is a, a geothermal plant operated by Ormat. And uh, they have, um, um, there's a couple of really interesting papers I found out at University of Nevada that are based on, um, um, based upon um, how they found the Santa Medio project. And there's actually another paper, another master's thesis by University of Reno that's done over the Great uh, Boiling Springs. I'm going to need to. Um, sure, that's all I had to say. Yeah. OK, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Um, Harlan, did you have some questions? Or I'm sorry, uh, I didn't. Please, <laughs> I jumped the gun here. <laughs> thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Desert Rose. Sorry. Um, well, Thank you for your two intelligent questions. Um, to answer the second one first, um, in terms of the Canadian company that has uh, a right in terms of lithium mining in the Black Rock Desert. Um, so I've, I can speak from my own personal anecdotal evidence, which is over the last four or five years, I've seen this company or companies like it pop up several times sort of claiming the, the right. Um, that doesn't actually give them the authority to execute or develop a, a mine in that site. It's sort of a, a placeholder, and that's happened a couple times throughout the Black Rock Desert. Have yet to see any movement um, on, on that in any meaningful way. Um, I, I would say that, you know, there's probably people in town and there are folks uh, in, in Gerlach that are keeping a pretty close eye on that, I would imagine. Um, and, and that it would be a, a sort of long process of review and community involvement. Um, and it would be something that, that would need to happen in concert with the community will there. And that might be particularly trying, if I had to guess, to get that will. Um, the other question around water rights. So as you correctly said, there are sort of several levels of, of water rights. Um, in short, we do have a certain number of acre feet per water, uh, uh, acre feet uh, of water that is our right as being a, a general rural um, zoning on our land um, that I think, I want to say it's three or something, Fireball, you may know off the top of your head what that acre feet per water right is. Um, but then we also have the right of all surface water. 
Um, and one of the things that we do have is a tremendous amount of surplus. It is literally coming up out of the ground um, to, you know, um, uh, many million gallons. Uh, I can get you some flow rates on the different pools, but there are several dozen springs that are coming up um, and we have probably about a hundred acres that are, that are pretty well established as a, a wetland because of that. So um, for now, in addition and outside of that set number of acre feet per water that we can utilize using the wells that are existing there, uh, and we have a lot of acres, um, there is also the right that we have as soon as the water hits the surface, um, which we can utilize as well. I hope that answers your question. Uh, Desert Rose, you may continue unless, uh, Loggy, you have something to add. No, great. Harlan, you had some questions. Don't know if you still... Yeah, I'm here, and uh, so great. Yeah, uh, you know, obviously the water, like um, Zach just said, there's a huge amount of water on the land, and my interest in you know developing it is to you know work with this water in the most conscious and beneficial and sacred way, you know, for you know just the to be restoring the parts of the land that you know are not to be you know to go back to nature, but then where humans are going to interact with it. So I had po posted two questions. One was. Of course, there's the, the amazing hot springs, and I, I, there is access, of course, to soak in that, but I was wondering if uh, some of that hot water could be channeled into a dedicated uh, hot tub uh, situation. And it's interesting because I put that in the question, and uh, Lady B is like, why would you want to do that? And my answer to that is that I have this vision of creating like a sacred water temple where people could interact with the hot water in a more... Mm -hmm. Um, in a certain space. So that the idea is, is it possible to tap into and uh, pipe hot water into a dedicated kind of a space? And the other question was about uh, potable water, drinking water uh, on the property. Uh, and you, you, yeah, of course, there's a lot more, but those are two focused questions to keep this on track and focus. Those are my two key uh, interests to know about right now. Thank you, Harlan. Wonderful to see you again. Um, so the short answer to both your questions is yes. Uh, the slightly longer answer is that contained within the primary site boundary within that 185 acres, um, there are several uh, hot origin points. Right now these exist as sort of hot holes, they're dinner plate sized or smaller, um, that one could capture and move that water um, to an appropriate area or nearby. I think the question of contained Soaking pools is actually really interesting because right now we do have this beautiful natural and a lot of hot springs. Um, it is perhaps the, the nicest natural hot spring, natural um, hot, hot spring that exists um, in my experience. That being said, it still has a carrying capacity. It still has, you know, it can only receive so many people going in or, or, or trying to rub mud on themselves or doing these things before you're really making a substantial impact. And the scale of this project and the level of inclusion of this project um, sort of exceeds that carrying capacity of those pools. So one of the things we are hoping to see, that I'm hoping to see, um, out of this design challenge in, in the world of water is um, taking those origin points. We have hot and we have cold really close to each other in that sort of wetlands hot springs area um, that can be moved. You lose with really well insulated pipes, you'll lose about a degree a mile. Um, uh, or you've got them contained there. And I think some sort of form of um, sustainable, um, non-destructive uh, hot spring soaking will be important to the future of Fly Ranch. That, that's what I can say from my own experience. Um, and then in terms of the potable water, um, we have wells in the area that have potable water that flow very well. We are working on getting, uh, we have a couple of wells that are uncapped right now that we're working on sort of unclogging. The filtration system is going to be one of the challenges. That's something I hope to see. There could be a ceramic or RO system or something. Um, but, it's, but it's really sort of in the vein of that, that open spirit where it's, um, we don't want to pre-describe what it should be. We want the, the community to, to ideate on that. Um, and, and power of good ideas in the masses. So um, both of those things are there, but it requires some clever human intervention and design to make it available for the use and enjoyment of all. Uh, great. I just want to, so that, that, that that's good. And of course, I was hoping to have a visit. I've never been there. And of course, it's been canceled, the visit, but I was going to go on, you know, just to be able to see and experience this firsthand. And I just want to just add one more uh, 
question to this overall thing because like you say there's a huge amount of water that comes through seasonally from the snow melt and the whole place when i looked at the photos there are areas of the property that are just kind of eroding away and you know it's it, it, you know where the water washes over it and all and you know i've been thinking a lot about how when humans interact with the land of how the water and the land is integrated and there are ways of what, what i'm developing is a concept called terra aqua forming where I would see that we could deal with this huge amount of water on the land to make it so that it's the most beneficial for the interventions we'll be creating and beneficial for the restoration of the other property and just having a you know very comprehensive complete vision for how you know we as humans can interact uh, and with the land and the water to turn this into the most vibrant sacred powerful place and and yeah, so so I'm just trying to get a Great. handle on that, and I you know I, I think this is it's so amazing that there's so much water there. So it's really not so much of a question, but if you just wanted to comment more about since you've been there for many years, uh, how you're thinking about you know moving ahead with dealing with this uh, copious amount of just natural water that flows across the property, and obviously has been dealt with in the past in certain ways, but taking it now to a newer level where like I'm seeing you know channels and pools and ways to you know work with this it'll make the place the most magical sacred beautiful thing beyond what we can almost imagine yes thank thank you harlan um i agree i think you know where your head's at is is the right place to be for this and i i look forward to seeing what comes out of it um water you know water in the desert is um you know it's one of those things that um you know when, when you need it, it's not there. And, and when you've got it, there's way too much of it. Um, and like most what's considered excess or waste or extraneous things, um, there's potential there for capturing, utilizing, um, really it's the design intervention that design intervention, creating a symbiotic system between the environment and humans. That's really sort of the, the, the crux of, of what's happening here. I think there are a lot of ways to do that across all the categories. I did happen to see um, also uh, a, a question come up from, uh, someone about uh, water harvesting from air. I will say that there is relative humidity readings that are included in the supplemental material that can give you a sense. Um, you know, there could be a sky water type project, something that's capturing atmospheric humidity um, and, and, and bringing it and creating potable drinking water out of that. Um, but I don't want to jump the queue too much. Desert Rose, back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Carolyn, you had a question. It was about gray water. Carolyn, still here? I'm right here. Okay. Sorry about yeah. that, Just unmuting. Um, yes, this was a big topic of discussion last year at Red Lightning. We were trying to figure out ways to um, be responsible with our gray water. And so I was wondering if you guys had looked at how you're going to deal with gray water at Fly Ranch and, you know, innovatively. That's a great question. Um, and it's a wonderful tee up to tease that uh, in the next breakout, um, I'll be sitting with some really, really smart folks talking about a regenerative BRC plan for 2024. That's sort of in line with the uh, Burning Man's 2030 sustainability goals, um, where I can talk a little bit more specifically about some of the, the feedback loops in terms of gray water, in terms of compost, in terms of some things like that. Right now, it's sort of three, three phases, right? So the first phase is um, handling our own in terms of on-site in our small gatherings, we have a compost pile. We're able to do, um, you know, we, we put some controls on what's available, what's allowed to be put in the gray water, so we know that we can then disperse that. Um, some micronutrients will start to build up soil a little bit, but really it's just an opportunity to to, to water water the gardens um, a, a little bit. Um, and compost, you know, we're able to process that as well. We are looking at and scoping what is the potentiality for scaling those up to start to handle Black Rock City diversion um, in terms of, um, you know, we can build up soils. Um, there is food scrap compost. There is human waste compost. There is um, gray water compost um, and, and all of those things, including, uh, you know, we can start doing biochar creation projects out of burns in Black Rock City and start to bring that back and, and, and create this really wonderful feedback loop. Um, so I will, I will say, um, we're thinking creatively about it. There is a category for that in terms of regeneration if people want to ideate or, or design interesting systems that can start to capture these things. Um, they can do some, uh, you know, uh, evaporation systems or dispersal systems um, would be really exciting. I when would also like, 
Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I was just going to say one great organization that I reached out to when we were having these discussions was uh, the Solar Living Institute in Hopland. And they were very, just very informative. So they, that, they may be someone you may want to have conversations with as well. That's a great tip. Um, I used to live in Mendo and love, love those guys. Um, I do uh, want to say we've got just a few minutes left. Yeah, um, I'm concerned uh, that we probably don't have any time for any more questions. Yes, um, but we will. We do have those questions and we can work to reach out to this group. If you've signed up, we'll be reaching out following up with some links um, and do the best to integrate those questions into um, the information that's available at laggy2020flyranch.org. Um, I want to say thank you for being a part of this community. I want to say thank you for coming to this little breakout and hearing a bit more and really just scratching the surface of it. There's a tremendous amount of information out there. Um, and I would like to give our, our parting words to our friends from the Land Art Generator Initiative. Thank you, Zach. And thank you everybody for taking the time and for you know responding to this challenge. Um, it's so important right now, it was before coronavirus, it makes it even more pressing right now that we need to start to reimagine the way that we live on this planet. And really in a way this is a design challenge, but it's also a world building exercise. We want you to think through the lives of the people who will occupy and use these infrastructures that you're designing over generations. Um, the, the life cycle for this um, landscape um, will be centuries and we want people to be thinking in that way and we want to be want to be thinking about um, setting an example um, that can be replicated. Um, it's not necessary that your design be uh, modular, scalable, or replicating, um, but we want you to be thinking about that. Um, and what would, what would you like to add? Have fun. Yeah, have fun. We hope that this is that this is a really enjoyable challenge and mentally stimulating and um, and hopefully a way to collaborate with people, um, physically distant perhaps, um, but still. Let me also just throw out, if people want to collaborate in some ways that are outside of the design challenge, reach out to us and we'll circle to the correct people. Um, but there, I, I, I know that Fly Ranch, um, it's bigger than Loggy 2020. This is one little piece of what's happening. So if, if there are other ways you want to be involved, I have no doubt there is an opening. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Um, enjoy the rest of this delightful spring summit. Thank you all. And I dropped the link to the snack bar if you want to pop in there during the break. And the next sessions will start in 10 minutes. And I'm going to kick you all out now. So have fun. <laughs> <laughs>